Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. Last video I have uh, completed the topic of uh, financial accounting, meaning, definition, nature of financial accounting, importance, advantages, disadvantages, all these things I have explained in the last video. That was the first video on unit number one regarding introduction to financial accounting. Now in this video, I'm going to explain you about accounting concepts and accounting conventions. Very frequently in examination, they will ask what are accounting concepts, what are accounting conventions. You have to explain all the accounting concepts and conventions. Remember, accounting concepts and conventions are the foundation for accounting. The complete structure of accounting is dependent on these accounting concepts and conventions. And every accountant must follow these accounting concepts and conventions while maintaining the accounts and while preparing the financial statements. So all these things I'm going to explain you in this video. So watch the video till the end and visit the playlist of my channel. I have uploaded so many video subjects on financial accounting, cost accounting, advanced accounting, managerial accounting, corporate accounting, advanced corporate accounting, income tax, statistics, so many subjects videos are already uploaded. So frequently you visit the playlist, select the subject which you want, watch the videos, enhance the knowledge. Take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain all the points in detail. Now, <clears throat> the topic of this video is accounting concepts and accounting conventions. Remember, accounting is a science which is based on some principles, rules and regulations. So accounting principles are the rules and regulations which must be followed by every accountant while recording the business transactions. So first of all, Accounting principles are the rules and regulations which are followed by accountants at the time of recording the transactions. So accounting principles are generally categorized into two. That is accounting concepts and accounting conventions. And the term accounting concepts, first of all, I'll explain the meaning of the term accounting concepts and what are the different accounting concepts. Then I will start accounting conventions. So first of all, focus on accounting concepts. The term accounting concepts include those basic assumptions or conditions upon which the science of accounting is based. So this paragraph will explain that accounting concepts are the assumptions or conditions on which the complete accounting is based. So without foundation, accounting will not be there. So complete accounting is based on those assumptions and those assumptions are called accounting concepts and every accountant must follow it and it is not required to be disclosed. Suppose I am the accountant, I will not disclose that I am following accounting concepts. No, it is not necessary. It is understood. It is understood that every accountant is following accounting concepts. Huh? If he does not follow, he has to mention it. Otherwise, no need to disclose. It is understood that he is following. Now, the following are the important accounting concepts. Many accounting concepts are there. Few of them, important of them are business entity concept. Second, going concern concept, money measurement concept cost concept, dual aspect concept, accounting period concept, periodic matching concept and realization concept. These are the important concept but apart from that many other concepts may be there. Now what are the uh, different concepts? Explanation of all these eight concepts I'm explaining you. Watch with full concentration so that you can remember all the points and can write confidently in examination the theory regarding this accounting concepts. First of all, business entity concept. According to business entity concept, from accounting point of view, sorry, from accounting point of view, the business and the owner 
will be treated as separate entities. So if I'm the accountant, I will think that the owner of the business and the business are two different entities. That means the transaction between the owner and the business must also be recorded. Example, when the owner invests the money, an entry has to be passed. When the owner withdraws the cash or when the owner withdraws some goods from the business, it will be recorded. Business owner should not think that myself and my business are one and the same. I can do whatever I like. If, the, if he thinks like that, we cannot be able to maintain the accounts. So accounting says the owner and the business are two separate entities. The transaction between the owner and the business must also be recorded according to business entity concept. So in accounting, business is treated as entity different from the proprietor. The business and the proprietor is regarded as two separate entities according to business entity concept. Now second one, going concern concept. The accounting will view, will assume that the business is going to continue for an indefinite period of time, at least for the foreseeable future of time. That means accountant must keep in mind that this business is going to continue in the near future and there is no intention. There is neither the intention nor the necessity to wind up the business. There is no intention of the owner to wind up the business and there is no necessity to close down the business. The business is going to continue for the foreseeable future. That is called going concern concept. Suppose if the business is going to be wound up in the very near future, that fact should be considered kept in mind while maintaining the accounts. <coughs> Next, money measurement concept. According to money measurement concept, only those transactions which can be measured in terms of money will be recorded. Only monetary transactions will find place in accounting. Non-monetary transactions will not be recorded. Example, the skill, the knowledge, the experience of the managers will not be recorded. The employee's efficiency will not be recorded because it is non-monetary. So any non-monetary item will not find any place in accounting. Only monetary transaction will be recorded. That is money measurement concept. Next one is cost concept. So according to this concept, an asset is recorded in the books at the price paid to acquire this asset is the basis for all subsequent accounting for the asset. So cost concept says when a business acquires an asset, the assets will be recorded at the cost, at the price paid to acquire the asset. The purchase price will be recorded as the cost of the asset, not the market value. The market value of the asset may come down due to a number of external factors and those factors should not be considered. In the books of accounts, the assets and liabilities will be recorded at their price, at their cost, at their value, not at the market price. That is according to cost concept. Now dual aspect concept. Dual means two. Every transaction will have two aspects, something giving, something receiving. So both the aspects should be recorded, what we are getting, what we are giving. That's why one account is debited, the other account is credited, double entry system. The dual aspect means every transaction must have two aspects and both the aspects should be recorded. One account is debited, the other account is credited. That is dual aspect concept. Now accounting period concept, <coughs> actually accounting will begin from the day the business starts and the accounting will end when the business comes to an end. That means as long as business is going on, accounting should be conducted. But the period, suppose the period, the business life of the period goes to 100 years. Will the owner wait till the end of the business to close the accounts? It is not possible. So that's why accountant will break the life of the business into equal parts. Equal parts means every 12 months. Every 12 months, the accounts are closed. The result of the operations will be ascertained. And next day onwards, new accounts will be started. 
that means every year profit or loss and then financial position will be ascertained at the end of one year one year means 12 months so every 12 months accounts are closed the result of the uh, operations will be ascertained that is profit or loss and the financial position will be ascertained at the end of the 12 months that is called accounting period concept next one is periodic matching concept in order to ascertain in order to ascertain the profit we have to compare we have to match the revenue with the cost during the accounting period how much revenue is earned and how much cost is incurred we match the revenue and cost during the accounting period to ascertain the profit for example during a particular year 10 lakh rupees is the revenue earned 8 lakh rupees is the cost incurred so 10 lakh minus 8 lakh we are matching 10 lakh on one hand 8 lakh on the other hand so we are getting 2 lakh rupees profit the so matching concept says we have to compare the revenue and cost during an accounting period next comes realization concept realization concept says whatever we have earned that only must be taken into account during the accounting period that means anticipate all losses but don't anticipate any gain don't anticipate any gain if a gain is going to occur in future don't record it until and unless we realized it Huh? If a loss is going to be incurred, if there is a possibility of loss, should be recorded. Realization concept. That's all. So totally eight concepts I have explained. Now I am going to explain you about accounting conventions. So first of all, what is the meaning of the term convention? The term convention includes those customs and traditions which guide the accountant while preparing the financial statements so conventions are those customs and traditions which every accountant will follow at the time of making financial statements then what is the difference between concepts and conventions accounting concepts are the assumptions or conditions on which the whole accounting system is based that means every day the accountant must follow accounting concepts whenever he maintain whenever he record the transactions he has to follow accounting concepts but accounting concepts uh, conventions are those customs or traditions which must be followed by accountant at the time of making financial statements normally financial statements are prepared at the end of the year so at the end of the year these conventions should be followed the first the following are the important conventions just now I have explained you eight accounting concepts similarly four accounting conventions are there which are frequently followed by the accountants the four accounting conventions are convention of conservatism convention of full disclosure convention of consistency convention of materiality all the four now I am explaining one by one first of all convention of conservatism the accountants must follow a conservative policy the meaning of conservative policy is anticipate all losses but don't anticipate any income playing safe in simple words we can say the accountants should play safe that means if there is a possibility of occurring a loss it should be recorded example a business is expecting that we will not recover certain amount from our credit customers that is bad debts what we call so if there is a provision for bad debts it should be provided right because it's an anticipated loss not actual loss but it may happen it should be recorded whereas anticipated gain should not be recorded until and unless we realize the gain we have earned the gain it should not be recorded so only anticipated incomes no place in accounting that is called conservatism 
conservative, playing safe. Then next one is full disclosure. According to the convention of full disclosure, all the material items, all the events and transactions occurring in the business should be completely disclosed in the financial statements. Nothing should be hidden. Nothing should be, uh, I mean, hidden by the business. Every transaction, every event should be clearly disclosed in the financial statements. That is full disclosure. According to this convention, accounting reports should disclose fully and fairly the information they purport to represent. They should be honestly prepared and sufficient disclose information which is material importance. That means honestly, the accounts, the financial statements should disclose all the material items taking place in the business. That is full disclosure. Next one is consistency convention. The convention of consistency says the method of accounting should be consistently followed from one year to another year. Frequently, the method of accounting should not be changed. Example, if a business follows straight line method of depreciation, same method should be followed from one year to another year. Every year, the method of accounting should not be changed. If it changes frequently, the method of accounting, we cannot be able to compare Comparison will become difficult. That's why once a method is followed, it should be followed. It should be followed in the subsequent years. Next, last one is materiality concept. Convention of materiality. According to convention of materiality, all material items, all significant items should be disclosed separately. It should not be clubbed with any other item. Example, the material items are like salaries paid, rent paid, telephone bill, electricity bill. All these are significant items. So these items should be shown separately. Whereas insignificant items, petty items, small items, no need to disclose separately. We can combine all. Example, in a business stationery is purchased. Stationery in the form of pens are purchased, pencils, papers, stapler or rulers erasers, sharpeners, all these will come under stationery. So why to record separately? We club all petty items under one heading called stationery account. No need to separately show it. That is according to materiality concept. All the items should not be disclosed. Significant items should be disclosed separately. Insignificant items can be grouped. That is according to materiality concept. That's all. Ha. So in this video, I have explained you about the accounting concepts and accounting conventions. So if you want the perfect knowledge, watch the video twice, thrice. Then only you can be able to remember all the points and can write confidently in examination. So if you are satisfied with my lecture, give a like to the video. Share my channel among your groups, among your friends, so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. Give your comments. And subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed. And lastly, by the super thanks which is given below the video. Inshallah the next topic I will continue in the next video.